The construction of this device is very similar to what you've seen before. In our first case, you can see the same tilt screws, the same locking screw, what looks to be the same receptacle with the lens in place. And you use the same tools for doing the adjustment. The key difference in all of this is instead of having things fixed, we have the special connector on the end of the fiber. And it's an adjustable connector. There's a little ring on the back here called a locking ring. And there's a little knob in the back, little adjustment screw on the back for adjusting the amount that the furl, the white part, actually sticks out. So if you loosen that locking nut and bring it back, by turning this section, you actually change the distance that the furl will stick out from the end of the connector. And that gives us our z-axis control. Everything else in the operation of this device is exactly the same as on our standard receptacle style laser to fiber coupler. We're going to use a power meter in order to demonstrate things here instead of just showing it on a screen. But you have the same things going on. We've already done the work of attaching the coupler onto the laser, doing the lateral motion for centering for X and Y, hooking on a multi-mode fiber, adjusting the tilt for the optimal coupling efficiency, and then connecting on our special fiber with the special receptacle and adjusting the tilt to get the best coupling efficiency that we can. So we've adjusted, we're adjusting the tilt and we're trying to get the best coupling efficiency. Now initially we might be significantly out of focus, so we might not get very good coupling efficiency to start with. So as I adjust it here, I'm finding that I'm getting somewhere around about 9 to 10 percent. The meter here has been referenced. Okay, it has a capability that if I put in the detector in front of the laser beam directly, I would get out a reading here of 1. So this reading of point 0.1 that you see on the display right now is indicating that I'm getting about 10% coupling efficiency. And right now, that's about the best I'm able to get, about 10% of that light being coupled into the fiber. <coughs> so once I have it, and I'm fairly certain that this is the best coupling efficiency that I got, I loosen my ring in the back here. And I start adjusting the position of the furl. Now, if I move it in the wrong direction, my power starts dropping off right away. It immediately dropped off from 10% to below 9 to 8, 9%. So now I'm going to move it in the other direction. And it starts increasing. I'm getting 11% right now. And it starts going down again. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, oh, OK, that didn't work very good. I only went from 10% to 11% here. But if I now adjust my tilt, I'll see that, in fact, my coupling efficiency has improved even more than that. I'm now getting 13 to 14% here. So I'm getting 4% more light than I did before. So now I'll go back and I'll adjust that distance again. And I'll keep moving in the direction that I got better results. And you can see it starts going up even more. Now I'm getting over 15%. And I'll start doing this in an iterative fashion. I'll adjust the tilt, adjust the focus. Adjust the tilt, adjust the focus. Now as I do that, my power level significantly increases. Okay, And by doing this, I can get that power level up above 70% as a typical number. In fact, I've gotten numbers using this type of coupler of 80 to 85 percent. Essentially, I was limited not by, the, uh, by my focus, but basically the, 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 uh, the optics in the laser itself. Once I've got that distance optimized, I then go back and I lock the locking ring back on. 